We have a global plastic pollution crisis from the poles to the equator, from our highest mountains to our deepest oceans. But right now, we've got an opportunity to address that problem. It was a pivotal moment when in 2022, more than 170 nations agreed that we needed to take global action to end plastic pollution. And that the best way to address this was through a global treaty. An intergovernmental negotiating committee was established of all the United Nations member states. Its final session will be in Busan in the Republic of Korea in November this year. And the current treaty text that we're seeking agreement on will be negotiated. The challenge is going to be in getting those 170 nations to agree on something that's really fit for purpose because it's really clear that the quantities of plastic that we're producing each year far surpass any of our abilities to manage those as waste. So we need to apply what I would call essentiality criteria to make sure that the plastic products we make, manufacture and use are essential, but they also need to be designed in a way that's more durable and ultimately more circular. If I'm optimistic and we get a consensus then that's not the end of the story. The really important step beyond that is the detail. If we're agreed that we need to reduce plastic production, well, which plastic items is it that we don't need in the first place? Now, to guide the decisions on that, the science has to be evidence-based and independent from conflicts of interest. In the absence of a science body that's composed of independent experts, then the challenge is we could adopt solutions that, regrettably, maybe do more harm than good. The draft treaty text has more than 50 references to microplastic pollution and it's clear they're really important. We know that they can cause harmful effects to a wide range of creatures and there's emerging evidence of harm to human health as well. So including microplastics in the treaty is going to be essential, otherwise we're going to miss a substantial part of plastic pollution. It was our research at the University of Plymouth that coined the term microplastics, publishing the first paper on this topic more than 20 years ago. Our research has been used by policymakers around the world and it's directly cited in legislation. As a coordinator of the Scientists' Coalition for an Effective Plastic Treaty, I've been working with over 400 scientists internationally. We've been participating in the Intergovernmental Negotiating Committee meetings to help to deliver the critical scientific evidence that's going to be needed to guide us towards a successful, strong and ambitious legally binding treaty. 